So it occurred to me that maybe somebody, some sad anorak like myself out there, might be interested in knowing how these things come apart and go back together again. Since I'm uh, midway through reassembly, obviously now's a good time to do it. So uh, we have our Onyx 2 rack, box of cables, uh, compute module and graphics module covers as well as the hats and it goes together something like this or rather comes apart something like this uh, so first you'll take all the cables off the rear you'll pull um, all of the SCSI cables and things like that off you want to take the cross towns that go from the um, K towns to the cross towns or my backwards maybe these are the K towns um, take those cables off I'm going to take your power cable out of the uh, storage bindle, which is down the bottom here. You're going to disconnect the compute module power and uh, SCSI box power and the SCSI cable. There are three screws on each side on the back. They are in these sort of um, L brackets here. So that one and then this uh, compute module has it as well, uh, actually so does the SCSI box. Um, of course if you undo these, the module doesn't go anywhere because it's still going to grab onto the arm. So you need to take these ones off, so that will loosen them from the back. This one has three as well. And around the front there are another six screws, these are somewhat larger. This one's been a bit dented. in One, Two, and then, where is it? Three. So you'll take these off, and then it literally comes free. And I could pull it down, but since the thing weighs about 200 pounds, I'm not going to do that. Uh, same for the lower one. So that has them freed here. Come on, come on. There. So it just slides in and out. Now, these things, thank God for that, are on shelves. So once you undo the screws, it doesn't just like fall out like would uh, happen on a regular rack. Uh, presumably because the weight's just so obnoxious with the modules that they're on. There's one shelf there, there's one shelf there, this is for the SCSI box, and then this is the lower sh module shelf here. So, um, you can completely unscrew it, completely disconnect it, and then just leave it sitting in there. In fact, that's what these are doing right now, they're just sitting on the shelves. Let's uh, slide her back in, there she goes. So, Putting it back together again is the reverse. Um, I have found, um, the first time I did this, when I took these apart, I took all of the boards out, as well as the fans and the power supplies. The upper power supply weighs about 60 pounds, oh, maybe it's 40 pounds, and the lower one maybe 25 pounds. Um, so, as you can imagine, that's a pretty damn serious amount of weight there that you drop as soon as you pop them out. Uh, the boards probably constitute another 40 pounds of weight, particularly the node boards, which are damn heavy. Um, I didn't take any of these out, uh, mostly because they're fiddly to get them back into their XIO slots, but I did take the main node boards out. That worked okay, particularly the node boards are relatively easy pulling out, however, uh, the node boards have the compression connectors, so you've got to be careful with them or else you'll um, screw up the little wee fine hair-like connectors on them, or the hair-like um, contacts on them and can damage them. And with these, I discovered that um, all the sliding in and out, in and out, in and out, I actually pried a couple um, heat sinks off. And in one case, I got a raster manager board so close to whatever board was next to it that I peeled some of the surface mount um, chips. I think I had one diode and then a couple actual microchips off the back of it. So they are very close together in there. When we did it this time, we didn't take any of the boards out. I figured that for the extra three or four hours it would take to completely take all the boards out, stick them in boxes, make sure they didn't get damaged, and transport them, it was simply easier not to bother and just to put the extra back into it. Um, I am vaguely bruised, having brought all these things up. Uh, my buddy, Prale, uh, is about the same. Um, they are not light. Uh, the graphics module is substantially heavier than the compute module. Uh, it's also quite a bit taller. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but well, that's a bit easier from here.
Yeah, you can see it's probably another, I don't know, quarter again taller. Um, so, yeah, I might be 200 pounds for the upper module, maybe more. Definitely a lot for two strong people to carry. It was quite a pig of a thing to get up and down the stairs. The modules are definitely much heavier than the racks. Uh, once you get the modules out, the racks are pretty easy because they're, like I've said many times, made of aluminium. So they move pretty easily. Um, where the hell was I? Okay, so uh, you slide the modules out and then assembly is pretty much the reverse. Uh, modules back in, screws in the back. Ah, that's where I was. So I have found that um, it is easiest to get them all lined up if you screw them in the back first. They are, um, particularly when you have this many of them, they kind of, like the module matches the L brackets. So if you um, put a module into the wrong one, then nothing quite matches up and you have to loosen everything, which is such a pain in the ass. So um, you can see here, this is C1S. We have C1SL for the lower. And then somewhere, I even have the rack marked. There we go, C1S. Uh, that way I could tell what module went to which rack, uh, and then the same, the boxes are marked, and then the screws are marked, so I know what screws go to which module and all that crap. Um, uh, uh, what screws go to which rack. Uh, so, if you put the rear ones in first, and you don't tie them all the way, and I found, like you can see here, that the things are just a shade off. Uh, I have a handy little pry bar that I use. So if I was to do this, which I will afterwards, because I'm not going to bore you watching me screw them things in, uh, I'll do these in first, then I'll jimmy it over. That'll make it a little easier to get to. Uh, on occasion, it doesn't quite go far enough, and so actually this one's kind of caught on this lip here, the module's in sideways. Let me bring it over a bit. And then you can bend the L bracket. This one's being a bit stiff, I'm afraid, but uh, we'll make it work. So, do those in, the six in the back. I'll leave them a bit loose, and then I'll do the six on the front again loose, just so that everything is kind of lined up, then I'll tighten the ones down on the back, uh, sorry, tighten the ones down on the front, and then tighten these down on the back so everything's locked in place. Once I have all those screws on, then I start reassembling the front. Uh, usually I find it's easier to put the disc box cover in first, then um, in the case of this one, it has a... Um, the hell are they called? MMSC display. Uh, in these, they go about here-ish. So, uh, it'll clip here and here. So, uh, you... How does it work? Take the cover. And see it sort of slots in these... Uh, there it goes. Rails here. Jam it on. A good solid clip, a uh, thump, and the clips will grab. And then the MMSC display slots onto the front of this. It has tabs that catch here, so that'll lock it in. Uh, don't forget the cable. This one, oh, actually, this one doesn't have any MMSCs at all, so this is the wrong one. It must go on the one of the other ones. Never mind. Anyways, uh, if it had an MMSC, the display would go here. Then the uh, upper module cover, which is this one, simply. You can see these clips. Up and on, like that. Easy. So it's the upper, then there is the vent cover that goes over there which is this one here. Uh, this is the exhaust fan bay for this. The um, intake is here. This is the fan tray here. So the air comes in from the back, it's sucked up through here, blown through the card cage, blown through the discs, and then it exhausts out here on the front. 
This one, uh, same fan tray is down here. You saw it from the rear. It's got a big squirrel cage blower. This one has individual fans. I think it's got nine of them or something like that. This one just has a single big squirrel cage that pulls it in, blows it up and through. And then if we go up, exhaust at the top here. And then you'll see the hats are vented. So it just blows out the top like that. So, uh, cover. And then the lower one does exactly the same. Again, note the little hooks. There we go. Drops on like so. And then finally, the cable bindle, which is generally the uh, more pain in the neck to get on. It's got much larger clips on it. I'll take it, slam it to the bottom. These are the guides here, and then the clips grab in here, slap it in, you usually have to give it a good slam. Then the bindle cover, which is this one. Go over it like so. And like the MMSD display, you see the little uh, grabs here on the notches, and that'll lock it in place. And then finally, there's the kick plate and it's actually upside down because it should have this gap at the top not the bottom and uh, you'll see it's sort of got these clips on it that go all the way around and they just grab straight onto this aluminium rail here the back of the clip fits into this slot here on the top and the bottom in fact since it's off I can even show you pretty easily so grab on the bottom and then Thankfully, it's not too bad to get back off again. Unlike the other ones, the bindle's kind of a pain in the neck. To remove the bindle, you take your handy little pry bar, which is here, and you'll throw it in the slots. Actually, that's not the bindle cover, but it has the same thing. Uh, this is the MSC display cover. But it has these things, um, these two slots. The other ones, of course, are, have a grill on front, but if you look through the grill, you can find a slot that you throw it through, twist and it'll pop out. The vent, however, does not appear to have these slots. So I have found that what you can do is you'll um, gently sort of pull it to one way just to open a gap, slide it through and then pry on the whole damn vent and it'll move out enough that it'll release on the clips and do it from the other side. Uh, and then finally, uh, oh, we have a cover. And we'll see if I can make it work, uh, but it's probably not going to play nice for me just because I'm showing off. It actually goes here, like this. So the idea is that your exhaust ear uh, goes straight up through the hat and doesn't get brought back down, I guess. And it kind of sits something like that. There's a tab there that goes in, and then there's a tab here. Actually, there isn't a tab there. I always have a hell of a time with this. I think it goes this way, uh, and it just sort of sits in, up in there, and it just extends far enough out that it sits on top of here, and then finally the hat goes on top. So, um, well, kind of long-winded, probably not that interesting to most people, but should you need to take one of these things apart, with any luck, I have been vaguely illustrative. I doubt it, but one hopes. Have a good one.